Hey everybody, Chris with Bear Outfitters here, and today we're going to talk a little about something that I'm super passionate about, and that is first aid. First aid is something that everybody should know a little bit about, something that everybody should train in, and something that you need to know for your trips into the backcountry. So without further ado, let's get to it. Every chance that you get an opportunity to do some first aid is an opportunity to hone your skills. I unfortunately have had a lot of opportunity to practice first aid. I have been a scoutmaster for a couple of years, I was a scout leader before that, I was a scout before that. I have been camping for a long, long time. And because of that I have had a lot of chance to pick fish hooks out of people, treat burns, treat bumps and scrapes, treat blisters, and treat some more serious injuries. Unfortunately, I've also had the opportunity um, and the task to be on search and rescue crews that ended up finding people that weren't so fortunate. And so first aid is something that is really important to me and I want to make sure that it's important to you. We did a previous video, or I did a previous video, where I talked a little about an individual first aid kit and I had a bunch of responses back, which was great. But I had a couple of people email me and say, well this is great for bumps and bruises, but it's not great for more serious injuries. You should have a chest seal, you should have a tourniquet, you should have all this. And I respond to that by saying, it's not a trauma kit, it's an individual first aid kit. If I'm on an expedition and I've got 30 people with me, then yeah, we're gonna have a more serious first aid kit, maybe with a tourniquet in it or chest seals or something that's more, a little bit more involved than just a little basic first aid kit. But everybody in your party should always have a first aid kit. It's one of the 10 essentials for a reason. Now, an individual first aid kit should be tapered and kind of tailored towards your level of training. If you have zero training, then yeah, you need to probably do some YouTube homework and get out there and learn a little bit. So learn how to treat a blister, learn how to apply direct pressure, maybe learn how to do some CPR. All of those things will come in handy not only in the backcountry but in your day-to-day -day life. My mom likes to tell a story about my little brother who learned how to do Heimlich in the scouts, learned how to do the Heimlich maneuver. And when my other little brother was choking, my brother said, oh crap, he's choking. What do I do? What do I do? Heimlich maneuver. So he runs over and, huh, 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 and he gets it right out. Another time, my same little brother that choked fell down in the shower and cut his head. My sister brings him out to me and I go, crap, bleeding, head bleeding. Uh, what do I do? Apply direct pressure. So I grabbed a towel and slapped it on the back of his head and he is alive today and mostly unaffected by it. Love you, little brother. He's kind of dumb. Anyway, your first aid skills are important because they will be applicable not just in the backcountry but also in your day-to-day -day life. If you're the first person on the scene and you're the senior person in your party, you're the person with the most first aid experience, congratulations. It's time for step one. Take charge of the situation. You're the person that's going to decide how we're going to deal with this. Next thing you're going to figure out is how you're going to approach your patient safely. If they just fell down a cliff or if they slid or if there's something that's big and bad out in the way, you need to make sure that you're going to be able to get to them without getting injured yourself. So determine a route, determine who's going to go where, and figure out how you're going to approach your patient safely. The next thing you're going to do is evaluate your patient and perform rescue services and first aid as needed. So you can check airway, circulation, breathing, and blood. So you're going to make sure that they're not bleeding profusely from any of their orifices and you're not bleeding profusely from any holes in their body. Those kind of things are what we call a major downer and kind of a bummer altogether. If somebody has heavy bleeding in the backcountry, you need to control that bleeding first before you do anything else. The next thing you're going to do is protect your patient. If it's snowing outside, you're going to want to make sure that they're warm. If it's raining, you're going to make sure that they're protected from the rain. You're going to make sure that they're protected from the elements and that nothing else is going to hurt them. The goal is to make sure that they get home safe, not that they get sunburned because you left them out in the sun all afternoon. Find shade, find shelter, do what you need to do to make sure that your patient is protected and comfortable. Now that you've got them out of the way a little bit and you've had a chance to make sure that nothing bad is going to happen to them, this is a good chance for a second evaluation. You're going to make sure that there's no other injuries that are going to contribute to this person having issues. And next, you're going to make a plan. Hey, we're in the backcountry. We're kind of screwed. Are we going to use a PLB, a personal locator beacon, and call in for an SOS and get somebody here? Are we going to roll them out? Are we going to fly them out? Are we going to hike them back to the front, uh, front country and figure out you know, a vehicle to get them back to a hospital? What's going to be the plan? Let's figure out a plan. Plan, plan, plan. Once you make that plan, the next step is to implement that plan. And once you have a chance to implement your plan, if you need to improvise, adapt, and overcome an obstacle, that's the time to do it. Now, I recognize that first aid isn't a super sexy topic. I really do. But it really is something that's going to be useful for you in everyday life, and it's something that is universally applicable, whether I'm in the back country or in the middle of downtown. There is something that I can use out of my first aid 
kind of toolbox that I can use to make sure that this person is safe, that they were going to get them taken care of, that we're going to make sure that they get home safe to their family. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, I've had the opportunity, I guess, to participate in some search and rescue, and it's always terribly, terribly sad to find somebody who has passed away in the back country. It is not a situation that I want anybody to have, and so if you can learn the skills to help somebody, I believe that you should. We're all responsible not only for ourselves, but for helping other people as we can, particularly with first aid skills. It's something that you learn to help other people. It is a truly selfless act to learn it. So I hope that this video has been educational and instructional. If it has been, please like and subscribe. If there's something that you feel like I dropped or left out, something that you think I need to mention in another video, please leave me a comment below. As always, you can find us on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash Bear Outfitters. And you can participate in the Bear Outfitters Friends and Family Facebook group if you want to join the conversation there. I hope to see you guys there, and I hope to see you out on the trails. I hope you're staying safe. Until next time, guys, happy trails.